indeed a uh, very good morning to you and the Kirigu has just rightfully mentioned I was playing earlier on and I can tell you for a fact I've won several games and that is the official position I've won several games but nonetheless I've decided to let the professionals actually partake in this uh, interesting game that has been in the country for about 50 years so we're interested to find out more about table tennis you can see these two gentlemen uh, the gentleman on my right uh, his name is Josiah he has represented the country uh, on various levels and also on my left that is Mr. That is Mr. Michael Tieno uh, ideally one of the most experienced table tennis players in the country he started playing the game when he was at least about nine years old so he'll be telling us more about why he took an interest in this uh, interesting game and there's a gentleman here it seems that for this morning is going to be the referee at one point but I'm sure he'll be involved uh, with this table tennis game that's going on as we speak. We also have a scoreboard here so we'll be keeping track on who is winning and who is uh, on the receiving end and we also this morning honored to have uh, Mr. Andrew Mudibo, he's the chairman of the Kenya Table Tennis Federation. Uh, thank you for joining us on the Power Breakfast Show. First things first, the sport of table tennis. Uh, for, for the past about five years it seems that it's being on its ascendancy. What is your federation doing right? Uh, what we are doing right is that uh, one we realized we needed to put in place the uh, required structures and we brought the structures down to the junior level yes and right now even if you look at it of late we've been concentrating on how do we build it up on uh, from the juniors and recently we launched something called uh, to chase a table to yes. chase a table is just we need to create awareness in each and every household now under to chase a table it is an issue about partnering up with the corporate world partnering up with the community that is there because growing table tennis or yes. any sport you cannot grow it without the support of the local community. It is not every day that you will get funding from the government. Yes. So you need to devise ways how you can be able to get uh, the funding. And for us, to chase a table is an avenue whereby we want to transform lives of uh, the youth who are playing, the junior yes. players who are playing through table tennis. Okay. So what you are looking at is through the partnership. For example, we could get somebody who would come in in a center that has been set up for that person to come and uh, maybe a bank to give a talk to the youth who are there. Yes. So that way they benefit and we benefit by putting the youth they are able now to play table tennis. Okay. And for us, this is what we are looking at and at the table. So you've just talked about uh, how it can actually uh, help grow the game, but looking at it, the mechanics, what are the exact mechanics? You're saying you're interested in targeting the, the young uh, players, the young uh, people you'd like to just natural future stars how does it work what are the mechanics exactly if there's a young boy there's a young girl who is watching and would like to be involved in the in this chess table how how does it work and that chess table we are looking at the 47 is it a countrywide thing it is a countrywide thing uh, 47 counties yes. right now we have a campaign where we are looking at uh, at least one table per county i know one table is not enough in a county and that is why it is important that we get now the partnerships of the various corporates who are coming in now in each county there will be a center that will be set up. For more information, uh, if there is a child out there or a parent who wants yes. to involve their young one to be involved in the activity. Are there contact points in the respective counties? Uh, for now, what? because we are going as we move along, that's when now the tables are being set up. Okay. So the only way you can be able to get that information is either through on our social sites, yes. either through the Facebook, which is uh, Kenya Table Tennis uh, Association, or our Twitter handle, which is uh, Kenya Table, or most important, through our website, which is uh, www.tabletenniskenya.org. Uh, okay. okay. As far as the situation of the country is concerned, uh, you, um, you told me earlier on that uh, the sport has been actually been in the country for about 50 years. Uh, but uh, Kenya actually has Kenya actually participated in, in the Olympics. Has it ever Kenya been represented at the Olympic Games, given the fact that we have over half a century playing the game? Uh, Kenya has never been represented in the Olympics and uh, the reason why we've never been represented is that the infrastructure, uh, if, you don't if you don't put structures that you can build on and you can rely on getting there you will never get there and yeah. that is why for us as Kenya Table Tennis we've now, we started a journey five years ago to put in place those structures uh, in the next two weeks we'll be having a team of four who will be going down to Khartoum Sudan to play in the Olympic qualifiers and right now we have a player who's been in France yes. for the last uh, three months Peter Theuri, he's coming back on the 9th he, we took him there for sp specialized training yes. and we believe that he's one of our favorite players yes. who he might stand a chance to, to qualify you, you thought about qualification and uh, looking at it how does it actually work, is it uh, the, the winner takes all or is it uh, an issue of ranking because I know a lot of other sporting uh, disciplines, specifically even tennis, that's how they are normally, how, that's how the qualification is actually done. Is it the same scenario or 
how does it work with the for the olympics the ranking is completely different for you to play what what happened is that continents are given a location by yes. the international olympic committee now based on those uh, slots that have been allocated the first slow, uh, opportunity that let's say for Africa that we got was uh, during the Congo Brazzaville games. And so let me interject. It seems our referee has been, uh, he's <laughs> not keeping scores. Let, yeah. This movie can keep in scores. <laughs> At least we know they, this series triumphing among these two gentlemen. Yeah. Josiah and Mike, yes. So the second uh, slot or opportunity that we've been given, it is now in uh, Sudan. Mm -hmm. Because in Congo we did not manage to qualify. Our players were removed in the round of uh, 32 players. So the second opportunity that have been given is now in uh, Sudan. Yes. So if they play well, then they should be able to pick up the four remaining slots that are available for Africa. Okay. And then Kenya will be hosting a very major uh, event in the next uh, few months. Tell us more about it. What, what about 27 African countries are expected? Yes. Uh, the International Table Tennis Federation awarded Kenya the Africa 2016 Africa Southern Hopes yes. uh, Challenge Week. Now what happened is that under that Challenge Week we'll get uh, cadet players who are under the age of 12 years. That so is like one young boy. Players. Yes, it's young, young players because even for ITTF it is a matter of going down to the younger players so that we can be able to develop the game and grow it. Okay. So we'll be having a total of 27 countries who are expected okay. to come down to Kenya yes. to be able to participate in, uh, in the event. Okay. And uh, just the other week we held uh, a Region 2 development course mm -hmm. which was uh, uh, conducted by an ITTF expert called Ronald Buguanya from France. Yes. And uh, the target was for the 12 countries who are in this region. So all that is just part of the development and uh, activities that have been targeted towards this region and uh, mm -hmm. most importantly Kenya is on the forefront okay. of, host of uh, hosting all those activities. Kenya is on the forefront indeed and looking at the continent uh, ideally most of the times um, it, becomes, it, it becomes as no surprise the fact that North African teams and actions who triumph. How is Kenya's position in the continent? Uh, we, have a lot of ex we have a lot of history in the game but how is Kenya's position in the, in the continent? Yes, it is true that North Africans will always dominate because for them they are closer to Europe. It's easy for them to cross over and play professional or play with the European teams that are there. They have the exposure. For us, as uh, countries that are in the southern region going down, mm -hmm. from Sudan, Ethiopia going down all the way to South Africa, yes. the disadvantage is now issues of airfare. For example, if I have to go, like next month the team will be going to Sudan. Yes, to Khartoum. Khartoum. The cost of the air ticket is around uh, 70,000. Now, that is a lot for some of the African countries, maybe for them even to get that connecting flight. They might be forced to go and connect either in uh, Dubai or connect in Europe yes. for them now to go to, to the venue. So those are the, some of the problems that Africa has. So it is an issue of, of also financing and also government support that you comes you in a particular about spot. Issues. Uh, and looking at equipment, looking at infrastructure, what is Kenya's situation? Are there enough? Uh, it's not about having a one table per county, which is, a, which is a, I think, is a, 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 li, a, a li small amount of uh, uh, small number of, if, of tables. But looking at the infrastructure in the country, how is the situation? The situation that I can see is that we have in each county, as we talk right now, we have uh, table tennis. We have table tennis even in schools. The tables are there. The rackets are there. Now we know infrastructure is also an issue. What Kenya Table Tennis has done is that we partnered up with a strategic partner, an organization called Pink Sons from Tears. Yes. What that organization will be doing is that they'll be sending us people who will be teaching the local community at the grassroots how to make table tennis tables. So it is not a must for you to go and buy the expensive one. Okay. So for a start, those who are play who are starting, they'll be playing with homemade tables, and then as they progress, as their level goes high then you can now graduate now to the main international tables. This, this is a professional uh, table tennis table. Uh, table. Uh, how, how much would such a table cost? And the, the rackets that are molded, these are actually called rackets, right? Yes, uh, rackets. Yes. Just tell us, uh, give us an overview of how that ma this would cost, like the table itself, the net, this particular racket. Uh, I'll start off with the table itself. Uh, if you look on the side, if the camera will be able to focus on it, on yes. the side, there is uh, a mark written ITTF. Yes. I think it's in a small font. It's in a small font? Yes. Now, tables that have, have that mark, they are, those are tables that have been approved by the International Table Tennis Federation. Mm -hmm. So the cost of this particular one is uh, in Kenya, it will cost you 80,000 Kenya shillings. 80,000 Kenya shillings. As the ball comes to me, uh, the net, how much will it be? The net, you are looking <laughs> it seems at. all the balls are coming to me. <laughs> 
the the net, which is uh, this one, this one is costing you 8,000 Kenya shillings. Eight, okay. The racket, it varies. For the professional ones, those who play like Ali Khan and the others, the racket will cost them roughly around 14,000. 14,000, a pair? Yes, a, a pair. What, what happened is uh, I'll ask uh, Ali Khan to come and help me. Yes. Ali Khan, of course, has represented Kenya Ali in Khan has several represented tournaments. Kenya, so I'll just ask Ali Khan to remove the rubber of the racket so that we know how it goes because many a times you find people go to the supermarket and they buy a bat of table tennis yes but for the professional ones i'll just tell him to remove just remove all of it how will it come back we'll just put well, there's a glue special glue okay. that uh, we put now for us just remove also the other side so Ali, can i do hope you have other rackets yeah <laughs> <laughs> otherwise you'll miss your match <laughs> Okay. So if you look at it, we have this is uh, usually this is the blade. This is the blade. So for the blade, there are different types. You have the wood, you have the carbon, and then uh, there's also special uh, titanium which you can use to play. Okay. Now uh, we have the blade, and then the next thing that we look at is now the rubber. Okay. It is usually square, and you put it, and then it is cut. Now the rubber, the prices also vary. There are different uh, types that are there. I, I used to think that this is just any regular rubber you can get, because even I'm looking at this is like almost similar to the material <laughs> for sleepers. <laughs> no, it isn't. Okay. It's like when you look at a bike, you might have the Boda Boda, and you have the okay. racing bikes. Okay. So the rubbers depend. You might have like this one is. Uh, we have the anti-spin uh, with the inverted uh, anti-spin. Yes, mm -hmm. the anti-spin, and this is not for the anti-spin. This is just for the normal uh, play. Okay. Yes. Okay. Ali, you've been playing uh, this game for several years. Just tell us your history. Looking at this, sorry, you have you have, you have spoiled your racket. Sorry. I know that you have several pairs. Okay. Nonetheless, looking at this game, um, about uh, we understand about a uh, hundred players. If I'm not wrong. In yes. the country, is it a hundred or thousand? We are looking at uh, the most active ones are around a hundred. Around a hundred. The ones who. So like, he's one of the hundred. He's one of the hundred, the lucky one, because uh, his performance earned him a place in the national team okay. to go to Congo Brazzaville. Okay. Ali, you experienced uh, the African Games in Congo, and just before even you talk about that, just tell us about uh, the, this game, about this game, table tennis. What made you start playing this game? Um, I started the game because uh, my friend introduced me actually when I was 10 years old, mm -hmm. and uh, my coach saw that I had potential to play the game. So I took it up seriously and it got me where I am today. Okay, so you've been playing since uh, about seven years, right? For, yeah, seven years. For about seven years. Yes. Um, how did you feel of course uh, starting to participate in the sport competitively, your first game? How did you feel? Are you a bit nervous? Of course, every time when you play your first competition, it's always nerves kick in. But over time, when you play more tournaments, mm -hmm. you get more experience and you don't have those nerves anymore. Okay. Yeah. As far as this game is concerned, look at these two gentlemen play. This is Michael Tino and Josiah. Uh, how are points calculated? Because for somebody who's interested in learning more about this game, uh, how, how are points calculated? Okay, so points are calculated obviously on a single basis. Okay. So you earn only one point. You cannot earn two points or three points. Um, you can earn a point when somebody hits the net. Yes. Or Let's assume the ball hits the edge of the table. The edge of the table. That is a point. Okay. But if the it hits the side of the table, it is not counted as your okay. point. Okay. Okay. And the ball can go around the net yes. or over the net, but okay. it cannot go under the net. Under the net. How will that happen? <laughs> it can happen. At some some points. Okay. Let's say the ball drops here and the player is forced to take the ball under the net. Okay. okay. No, I'll, I'll correct Ali Khan. <laughs> <laughs> if you are playing. You can hit the ball, the ball can pass under the net and it goes in. So How that one is happen? allowed. That one is allowed. <laughs> How does that the professional players they are able to do it because as you play, it is not like the way Josiah is, it's like confined to a particular area. Okay. He has to move. As they hit the ball, the ball obviously the angle now widens. Okay. So if you if the angle has widened and you're on uh, maybe the far on my far extreme right, yes. and maybe the ball was going down, he might be able to come in and okay. hit. So that ball will definitely pass below the net. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So what we usually do is that they usually imagine that this is an imaginary extension of uh, of the net. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I understand. I understand. Yeah. Ali, so you you've represented Kenya. How many times have you represented Kenya? And uh, you were at the African Games in Bra in Brazzaville, Congo. How was it playing against the best in Africa? Um, it was a great experience, of course, to 
see the greatest African players, mm -hmm. to watch them and learn new styles of playing from them. And of course, I could see that I have a long way to go even to make it to that level. And that would require some high level coaching. You talked about a um, uh, high level of playing. Uh, what was different? What are they doing differently that you felt perhaps you, you were caught flat footed? Um, mostly it would be the speed of the game. Okay. So, uh, so this, this speed, like their speed, this is, this is how this do you is, race it? <laughs> I would call this, this is the normal speed this actually. This is the normal speed, yeah. But by speed I mean also their footwork. Okay. The, it's, it's completely different. It's completely different. Yeah. And then looking at it, um, how do you train? As in, uh, how is it diff how is it, for example, when you're heading to the, when you went to participate in Brazzaville, Congo for the African Games, what was your preparation? Were you training three times a week? Were you training, uh, Four times a week. How does what? And even if you're training, what are you working on exactly? Actually, we were we were training in uh, Kasrani yes. for a two-week camp, and uh, we would have physical training every day. Mm -hmm. So because we know we were not we're not physically as fit as the top players. Okay. So we needed to work on that. So most of the time we were working on our footwork and. Uh, um, speed on the table. Okay. Yeah. A game, a typical game, how long will be a game be and uh, how is it divided? For just for somebody to understand. Um, it wouldn't take long for, okay, so there's best of five mm -hmm. bases. Um, it wouldn't take, it would take at least 15 minutes, I would say. 15 minutes? Yeah. So it's a lot of high octane uh, intensity in a, sp in a small span of, 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 of duration. Yeah, unless it's, it's, a, it's a tight game that takes the game to deuce, okay. then yeah, it might take longer. Okay, let me just interact with another gentleman here. This is Mike. Uh, you can see him playing. He's on my left. Mike has, so of course, just tell us, uh, looking at how you, you're playing the game, I understand that, uh, that uh, there's a technique, there's a certain way that you hold the racket. So just tell us exactly how that happens. There are different ways of actually holding the racket. This is it, Rashkila Gama Jembe. Okay, there's the, 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 the shake on style. And shake and shake on style. So you can point, point to the camera there and then just okay. show us. This is a pen hold style and this is a shake hand. Pe just repeat it, pen? Pen hold. This pen, is the pen, pen hold. Yeah, pen like hold. Like a pen, style. okay. Yeah, like a pen. And this is the shake hand. Okay. Yeah. So what's your style yourself? Mine is shake hand. Shake hand. Yeah. What's the difference between the two in terms of uh, ability to hit the ball? What is better? Which is What works what? Okay. I can say that the shake hand is more better for me because I started playing with the shake hand. Okay. Yeah. But, but with the pen hold, it's a bit harder. It's a bit harder. Yeah. In what way? Uh, let's say in attacking, chopping, receiving the ball, mm -hmm. any style. Okay. Yeah, it's a bit hard to, with the penalty. So. Ali talked about training and uh, he, he says that even in the build-up to the African Games in Brazzaville, Congo, he had a very intense schedule. You have represented Kenya at the Commonwealth Games in Glasgow, Scotland. How was it uh, in uh, Scotland? Okay, I can say, being it was my first time... Why nervous? <laughs> uh, it was harder because okay. and, and also competitive okay because all of the cameras the eyes are on you <laughs> so yeah nervous at least there I'll, I'll come back to you maybe me some people you can just touch on that uh, yes. he talked about something very important and he's also touched on something he talked about one high level high level high level coaching yes. and he also talked about now that element of exposure when players find themselves in the international arena as a federation how do you uh, mitigate against uh, such issues uh, at the end of the day Bernard is uh <coughs> The big question that is always there, it is an issue about uh, money, money, money. Mm -hmm. We need money for exposure, we yes. need finances, we need to take them out. What we are trying to do as Kenya Table Tennis right now is that we are trying to get into a lot of partnerships with uh, friendly federations abroad. Mm -hmm. Like right now we have a club in uh, France where Peter Theory is playing. And uh, for us we'll be sending our Kenyan players there. But for me to be able even to send uh, Ali Khan or... Uh, uh, my friend here, Josiah, or even Mike for that matter, is that we need money for the air tickets. Mm -hmm. We need to give him some uh, small allowance. We need to take care of his medical bills. Okay. Ali Khan will be going to France also where Peter is. Okay. But those are efforts that we do, we try to pull because without I, I sponsorship, th there's yes. a problem. I remember there's a while back that uh, you had actually um, ha had, a, I think, a, a, a coach from Pakistan, if I'm not wrong. Yes, uh, we worked with the National uh, Olympic Committee and uh, the International Table Tennis Federation and we had a coach called uh, uh, who came from in from uh, Pakistan uh, Arif Khan yes right now we've uh, requested the National Olympic Committee for them to 
under the Olympic solidarity for them to facilitate. be able to give a, to facilitate a coach for, for six months. We've already identified a French coach who is supposed to be coming in once the uh, National Olympic Committee give us the go-ahead and uh, things are put in place. Okay. Because that way it becomes cheaper. He's able to train more more of the players is able to tra to train more of the coaches for them to be coaches okay now based on that it becomes easy for us to be able to send now once in a while players to go and uh, for them to go up okay. when it comes for issues like for <laughs> removing butterflies <laughs> in major international <laughs> events yes. that's a journey that each one of us took yes you have to they have to be ready and it's surprising when uh, Mike says about the cameras. <laughs> there are cameras on him. He's not nervous, so he's doing well. He's relaxed. Yeah. Okay, I'll just try and, learn this and play a little game here with Josiah. Uh, maybe you can just tell me what. Proper racket. I'm, proper racket. This one doesn't have, doesn't have uh, the rubbers, right? I don't. You have excuses that I lost because they told me. I'm professional, so I've been. Uh, I've taken a. I've taken a small break. So. As far as technique is concerned, how does a game begin? I start with a serve, right? A game begins with a serve. Now, That's right. a serve, you, not, you first need to put the Sorry, that you need to I place not, the I'm ball. I'm not warmed up. I'm not warmed up. <laughs> a serve first starts with the, the ball is placed first on your palm. Okay. So it has to be open and then you now toss. So by tossing, that's when now the game is now starting. So you toss, you hit the ball, you don't <laughs> drop it on the table. Okay. You have to toss it up. So Jose will just show you how it is done. Okay. He'll just toss the ball up okay. and then you hit it. So when you hit it, the ball must bounce first on your side and then once on the opponent's side. So that's not a point. I've lost there. That one you've lost. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, it so the main aim is for you to return the ball to your opponent's uh, side. And it has to bounce once. If it bounces twice, then you've lost the point. If you don't hit the table, you've also lost it. Okay. And what, just tell us about the different techniques, because I understand there's something called a smash. Please, j j Josiah, don't try it now. <laughs> For you to know, Josiah has to smash. Eh? Okay. <laughs> so, you can just do a smash so that I see how that happens. <laughs> so, that, so that's, that's a smash. That is, that is a smash. Okay. Now, the different uh, techniques that are there for winning a point is either through a smash, you can even do when you're serving. You, when you serve, you don't serve for your opponent to return. You serve for you to get an advantage. Okay. There is deception. You can just the microphone. Uh, there is deception in services, for example. Yes. Uh, usually, most players, when they are receiving the services, they are like standing on the left part of the table. So I'd be here. Yeah, that other side. Yeah. Okay. So when I'm serving to you, I'm supposed to serve in a manner that it will give me an advantage when the we let's start playing for the see, point. I'm a professional. Let's, let's see. Okay. Okay. I'll need help with this. Huh? That's it. I'll force you to move back. <laughs> Professional, eh? <laughs> but I see what you meant. Yeah, you see like that? that? Yeah. I'll force you to move from that side of the table to this side of okay. the table so that I can have an advantage now. I'm stable, you're you not. It destabilizes me, actually. Yeah. Yeah. And yet I'm stable, but you're not. But can somebody actually, be playing with you, be actually can, can somebody can notice, can, can actually uh, be able to just know that this gentleman is going to try as much as possible to push me more on the right? Yeah, that's the thing with people who have played this game. So, like, Mike, Mike, can Mike come? So, for example, you're going to do that. How would you uh, defensively be able to... How would Mike actually just go about it? How would he be able to prevent that? Uh, for people who have played the game for long, for example, like Mike, the thing is watching um, the action when I'm hitting the ball with my bat. Okay. It's not watching where I'm looking at. Ah, okay. Yeah, it's okay. watching when I hit the ball. That moment when I hit the ball. Yes. Then now, from the bat... To watching where the ball goes. If you watch the person who is hitting the ball, then you'll be deceptive. Okay, I understand. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. So, and there's also different genres of the game, Mr. Mdibo. There's the singles, there's, uh, there's the doubles, and there's also the mixed. And evidently, you can see it's only gentlemen. Where are the ladies? <laughs> <laughs> First, let me answer about the playing. Yes. <laughs> the, the types of playing that are there, we have the singles. You can either have the men or the ladies singles. You can have uh, men doubles, you can have ladies doubles, you can have the mixed uh, doubles, and then there's also the team events where mm -hmm. for men mm -hmm. and also for ladies. Can just play? Today, the ladies are not there. Why? Because uh, the ones who are supposed to be here, they're in university and they're having lessons, so we couldn't <laughs> carry more. So, you've just touched on that. You said some are students. Are there professional uh, table tennis players in the country? Uh, right now, no, we do not have any professional because if you're professional, you need to earn from it. Mm. So we do not have. The person who we believe might be the first pioneer of being professional is uh, Peter Theuri because uh, depending with how the outcome will be in uh, his training in France,
mm -hmm. and that will determine if he's going back to be now a professional player. Looking at table tennis, uh, I've noticed that uh, this physical uh, stature of most table tennis players, they're quite uh, slim, uh, they're, not, they're not as... As smart as me. As not <laughs> 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 I, I would say blessed. <laughs> but is it as physically demanding as other sports? Yes, it is. Uh, all sports are demanding. Each sport has got its own uh, uh, learning. Let's say it's, it, each sport has got its own, uh, I don't know how to put it, uh, like a challenge. Yes. If it is table tennis, you cannot have, uh, for example, a sumo wrestler playing table tennis. <laughs> so some, some like so you have to have that physique <laughs> for playing. <laughs> so for table tennis, the lighter you are, you look at Josiah, look yes. at uh, Mike, look at Ali Khan. That is the physique of... Uh, the is that a recommended player. weight or is this, it's just your ability to be able to move? It's your ability to be able to move. Okay. Because when you practice, you're practicing on two things. One is on the concentration, and the second one is on the movement of, uh, for you to be able to move. What about gym work? Do you do gym work? Because you look yes, at the body is also to, be done. To, to have that power as well. Yes, gym work is also done because of the muscles for you to be able to move. Okay. So you usually train the upper and the lower body. Okay. Yes. So like if uh, Mr. Ali, how many do you do? Do you do gym work? What do you do in the gym? Like for example, you go to the gym, you're there standing with people who play rugby, you're standing there with people who play football, you're standing there with people who do wrestling. Mm -hmm. What will you be doing in weights? Okay, in weights, I, I wouldn't go to working with uh, bodybuilding or anything like yeah. that. But you'd work with the machines, mm -hmm. you'd slowly increase the weight that you pull. So you have to work on both your legs and your arms, obviously. Okay. Okay. There's a smash. <laughs> <laughs> so you lost that point. You smashed it on your end. <laughs> oh, yeah. but I thought... You need to smash on your opponent's side. I need to smash on the opponent's side. Yeah. So, so <laughs> as you play for that point, it's still the same. It's it doesn't same. change. Yeah. <laughs> Mike, you're, 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 I think, one of the most experienced uh, players uh, among these gentlemen here. Looking at table tennis, uh, what are you looking at in the future? What are you hoping to achieve yourself? Uh, I'm hoping to be a better player coming this future mm -hmm. and also to to let's say to embrace the other youngsters coming up mm -hmm. I, I would also love to exploit them and make sure even them they play table tennis too you started we started playing the game early yeah when you're quite young are you inspiring future players are you doing something currently trying to nurture those future stars yeah like uh, like my brother is uh, is is 15. Yes. Yeah, with him also he's playing in the juniors team. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Ali, what are you doing for, uh, to uh, actually help to grow the game? Uh, aside from also playing it, but uh, are you not having future stars? Yes, in my community, um, most of the players in my community are senior players. Yes. But we're trying to get more junior players in mm -hmm. so that we have mm -hmm. something to lean back on. Okay. The seniors are not going to be there for long. Okay. Yeah. So, if even if uh, just to just, uh, just You've also, you've also represented Kenya at the African Games uh, in, in Brazzaville, Congo. How are you helping future players? Uh, Nacha, rather. Are we helping? I'm saying we because it's more like a collective effort. Yes. So Kenya Table Tennis Association and the Nairobi branch, specifically City Table Tennis Club. Mm -hmm. That's where I train from. And uh, there are a lot of talents coming through City Table Tennis Club. Uh, young players and all that. So with the support from uh, KTTA, and uh, the players at uh, City Table Tennis Club, we trying to bring them up, you know, like those junior players, when they start at a young age, mm -hmm. then it's very easy for them to master the game, you know, like to nurture their talent from there, compared to when you start an, at an older age. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's what at City Table Tennis Club we're trying to do. Just go back to the root levels, bring up the juniors, and then they gain experience from there. If somebody wants to join your club, how would they go about it? As for example, City Table Tennis Club. Uh, we've been are uh, both of you in the same club or in different mm, clubs? No, we are, we are in different clubs. Like Ali Khan is uh, in Aga Khan's. Okay. And uh, Michael is at M O W. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Fox. Yeah. Okay. So like at City Table Tennis Club, uh, we we've gone legal recently, like uh, register and all through the Sports Act and all that. So when one wants to join the club. He just has to pay a membership fee of a one-time membership fee of 500 shillings, yeah. and then there is a monthly fee of 100 shillings. Okay. These 100 shillings, for example, in the club just helps in uh, uh, maintaining the club, like buying balls, yes. you know, maintaining the tables, mm -hmm. uh, cleaning the training place, the hall, and all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So of course, uh, Kirigo, 
Uh, I'm sure you're watching from there from an advantage point. I'm sure you're taking notes. Mm -hmm. uh, I understand you've played table tennis before. Who, so I? Yes. Long time ago. <coughs> so let's just test, test your ability. Remember, I'm a professional. I've just been uh, fine tuning my skills with this gentleman here. And let's see uh, whether you can actually. But not, the, not, the other important thing is that uh, this yes. week we launched, uh, we registered 200 uh, junior players yes. at uh, Makini School. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll be doing that in all the counties. Yes. So for Makini, those who live nearby can always go to Makini. Okay. There's an academy that has been opened there. Academy has been opened. Yes. Okay. So and even you talked about the. Sorry, uh, that was warm up, warm up, kidding. Okay. Warm up, warm up. Alright, whatever makes you happy, Bernard. Whatever makes you happy. Technique, technique, technique. Whatever makes you happy. You know he's going to lose, that's why. No, whatever makes you happy. Just do you, do you. Whatever makes you happy. Whatever makes you happy. Whatever makes you happy. Whatever makes you happy. Yes, so yes. The, the, the major championship that Kenya will be hosting, when will Kenya be hosting? Uh, the, apart from the March 20, uh, 26th event, yes. the Africa Hopes. The major one is the National League that will be kicking off this month. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the other major one will be the Thika Open in April. Okay. Yes. So, Kiko, okay, I believe uh, we can wind up the show. We can yes. have uh, actual, an actual game. Yes. An actual serious game. So, because if we continue now, the, the show will continue, I think, for about an hour. So, we'll, we'll just have to actually wind Bernard, up and we'll actually Bernard, continue Bernard, the game. Bernard, I, I, don't, I don't want to embarrass you. Bernard. On television. <laughs> okay. So, whatever makes you happy. So, let me wind up, yeah? Just wind is that up. Okay? Then, is that actually, okay? After, immediately then after you you can do this. All right. Well, thank you very much for joining us on the Power Breakfast Show this uh, Monday morning. As always, I'm hoping that you've been informed, you've been educated, and you've been entertained. I want to thank all our guests who are here. Mrs. Lucy Ndongo, the Registrar of Political Parties, as well as this beautiful team that has come to talk to us about uh, table tennis this morning. We're really, really grateful for you guys, and we wish you all the best as you move on from now. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow, same time, same place. Bernard, if I'm not wrong, Monday football? Yes, we have Monday football, of course. Uh, yes. We'll be, uh, just Look at the action of the weekend, a lot of uh, talking points yes. on the local front yes. as well as the international front. Uh, the African Nations Championship was taking place in mm -hmm. Rwanda. Mm -hmm. We'll be telling you, of course, just a recapping the teams that are qualified for the financial stage of the competition. And if you're a Chelsea fan, it was a victory. If you're a Manchester United fan, it was a victory. If you're an Arsenal fan, it was a victory. So at least positive news for supporters of those top clubs. You have all the highlights on Monday football. I also just want to say again, once again, just to show thanks yes. to uh, Mr. Of course, uh, Josiah uh, Ali. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank and Mr. Andrew Mugibo, the chairman of the Kenya Table Tennis Federation. Mm -hmm. And the gentleman there on the extreme, over there, I'm just positioned strategically. Uh, <laughs> to receive. Yes, uh, Michael. Mr. Michael Tieno. Thank you so much for joining us this morning on the Public First Show. From the sports desk, I wish you a fantastic Monday morning. Bye. We'll see you tomorrow.